and we're going to be discussing a specific light gun which is the Sindon light gun um, and its setup configuration for some arcade games that have been ripped um, and, and modified in some way shape or form perhaps but basically work on a PC platform and these are games these three are games that are not available anywhere else other than in the arcade. There's been no home conversions or home ports of these games. Um, and this is someone I've wanted to look at for a while. And the reason for me personally isn't, isn't necessarily to have these working on my PC here, but actually to get these set up and working on my Sega Limburg cabinet. So I have a rather funky Sega arcade cab, which does not get used that much. Um, and weirdly enough, the actual cabinet, when I bought it, was set up for using with uh, light gun games. So it's actually got proper Sega hardware in it in respect to light guns. I've got two light guns that are attached to the cabinet and it was actually um, running House of the Dead 4 I think, uh, the guy I bought it off, had House of the Dead 4 working off it. But anyway, I digress. So, Sindon light gun. I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail about this other than uh, some more high level thoughts in respect of uh, the product and how I've got on with it. So, uh, a Sindon light gun is produced in the UK and actually the guy that produces this doesn't live that far away from me, he's pretty local. Um, and the difference with this light gun is that it doesn't need any sensors. Needs no IR uh, sensors mounted around the screen. It's got a camera built into the front and it actually looks at the play area and what it uh, relies upon to actually work out where you point in is that it relies upon a white border around the play area and i'll show you that or you'll be able to see it when i do some demos of the games but that's the big difference between this one and other light guns that you can get i haven't tried any other light guns so i don't know how this fares compared to others all i can tell you is what i feel about uh, the way that this works on my setups and I have it working on two setups so my main PC I've been doing some trialing on and then tried it on my Sega Limburg cabinet and it works the same on both of the screens and setups and PCs that I've got so yeah it's a good bit of kit um uh, does it work yes it absolutely does work is it accurate yes it's accurate the only thing that I would say about it um is you get a small amount of of cursor jitter so if you've got crosshairs is you can just see the crosshairs just just move like that actually it's probably not that much but it but it's if I look at my finger it looks like massive but it's not but it does it and there's a slight amount of jitter there now you can tweak that out by um, a percentage ratio to remove that minor mute um, uh, movement but I think that makes it less responsive so I, I don't in fact I think I have done it but I've done it by a very small amount I think 0.5 of a percent um, uh, which calms it down enough but apart from that it is a pretty awesome bit of kit the quality is really good uh, you got a pump action uh, button or switch there so you can map that to something you've got two buttons down the side there you've got a d-pad and you've got another two buttons on the other side so you've got a lot of of configurable buttons on the gun and for certain games like time crisis 5 you have quite a few buttons that you potentially need to use or you want to map off or you know off a keyboard you don't want things on a keyboard um, and I'm able to map everything. So uh, the versatility of that side is really, really good. But in respect to does it do what it sets out to do in respect of, of 
a gun or a light gun that works with games? Yes, 100%, it does. So from that perspective, I think it's a good product. Um, and like I said, I haven't, I haven't tried any other solution, so I can't compare it. But it is, it is pretty much bang on for what it is and for what it does, and it does exactly what I want it to do. Um, uh, the software that you download to configure the gun and set it up, there's a few remarks in the community about how um, complex it is. In my opinion, it's not. It's not complex. Um, if you're looking for a, a plug and play solution, I don't think they exist. Uh, full stop. You have to get involved in configuration, setting things up, understanding how things work. I don't think the software is that bad, but I am an old git, so I've seen all, all, all. You know, I used to work with DOS, so um, anything that's got any front end on it to me is uh, is useful. I'm being slightly facetious there, but there's no. I don't have a problem with the software. It didn't take me that long to set it up. Um, and it's worked absolutely fine on my setup. So I've tried it on two PCs and it's worked absolutely fine. I've done a configuration on one PC, copied the files, moved them over to another PC, fired everything up, and it and it worked exactly the same, even on a different screen. So yeah, absolutely fine. So in respect to the gun, great, great bit of kit, does what I want it to do. So I'm going to go through three games. I'm going to split this video up and I will index the video. So move to the parts if you want to skip certain games or whatever. But we're going to talk about Time Crisis 5. We're going to talk about House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn and Virtua Cop 3. Now, all these three games um, are only available to um, be used via an emulation. You can't get any ports for these. And there is an element of complexity about, about setting these up, but it's not a massive amount. I've been messing around with this setup now on and off for a few days. And there's a lot of information out on the internet, on forums, on YouTube. Some is more useful than others in respect to information. But I never found one complete a repository or statement about how to set uh, either of these games up that work completely for me in the way that I wanted them to work. So I've done a fair bit of automation. I've created some scripts, um, effectively batch files, but they're using a piece of software called Auto Hotkey. Have a look at that on the internet. I'll show you the scripts that I've written for each game. Uh, so I'll split this down into, into each game. I'll do a section on the configuration side and then I'll do some gameplay footage in respect to it working on my cab because that's the that was the purpose, that was the objective for me. And it looks pretty funky, I'm gonna be honest. And it and it and it feels right because it's on an arcade cab. Um so we will fire in, first of all, we'll go to Time Crisis 5. So let's have a look at the auto hot script, auto key hot script that I have written um, <coughs> for Time Crisis 5 and I'll lead you through what each section is. So like I said, I've taken elements from all the different scripts that I've seen and I've created a script that is specific for my setup to do exactly what I want to do. So I've got a fair bit of automation in, in this script. And for, I suppose for anyone else's usage, then you have to look at the, the, the appropriateness of what I've set. Now, I'm using a Sindon light gun, so if you want to use uh, the configuration that I've set up for Sindon, then this will work off the bat effectively. Uh, you just need to change the paths for certain files. But I'll lead you through this and you can understand what uh, this is doing. And I've commented elements of the script as well to put some key remarks into the certain sections really. So the first lot here is just standard. 
um, a, a sort of good housekeeping for scripts and also that includes this part here which sets your your standard working directory so the first block which is this here that is a part of the script that checks to see whether or not the Sindon software is running if it is it will close it down if it isn't it will fire it up so it's just to do a, a clean startup process for the Sindon software which you need to be operating for you to be able to use the gun but it also means that having this as part of the script means I don't have to worry about actually firing up the Sindon software separately it does it as I come into the game uh, which is what I wanted to do <coughs> for this particular game we also need to use Demol Shooter and the X64 version of it. Again, I won't go into any detail around this. There's a lot of information in, in other videos about the appropriateness of using this and how to set this up for, for Time Crisis 5, but this is the portion of the script that actually loads it up. Then I am um, uh, actually loading up the time crisis 5 game and again there is some standard elements of this statement which is concerning these elements here that are being passed through again uh, plenty of information on the internet around this in respect to time crisis 5 and you must have this set up as as it is there I've also added in on the command line to set the resolution so you can set the resolution on the command line uh, the reason I've set it to 1360 is because that's the resolution of the screen on my arcade cabinet so just to make sure that's uh, that's fine and set correctly I could actually potentially um, super sample but uh, actually that's just give me a thought but anyway I won't worry too much about that at the moment I'll have a look at that at some point in the near future. Next part is to map the, the, the appropriate buttons that I want to use on the gun. So this is for Time Crisis pedals. Yeah, Time Crisis 5 uses a left and a right pedal. I've mapped those to uh, various buttons on my uh, Sindon which is part of the software have been mapped back to mouse buttons because effectively the Sindon is recognised by the by the PC as being a mouse. So I've mapped it to two buttons on the Sindon for, for left and right pedal. I've also mapped start button and crosshair so I can get the crosshair to come up because you have to set that in respect to Time Crisis 5, it doesn't come up automatically. That's if you want to use a crosshair. And of course, start button to actually start the game. And then finally, the final button being mapped is uh, another mouse button. But again, I've got that configured on my Sindon. And it's for skipping scenes in the game and also for weapon select. So, actually, weapon select you need. That's something you do need in the game. So I've got buttons to map to that functionality. The only element that's left is how you close the game down. So if I press the escape key, and I could actually map this to a button on my Sindon light gun if I wanted to, but I've just got it that on the keyboard, I'll press the escape key. And if I press the escape key, it will uh, cleanly close down uh, the game. It will close down the Sindon uh, software and it will close the script. So that's effectively my, uh, my script that, that I've, I've cobbled together from everything that's on the internet into something that, that actually works for me. So the purpose of this is effectively I am able to click on a shortcut on the desktop and it fires this script off and then goes through the process and everything's contained within the script. I could of course uh, call this script from the front end. I haven't 
looked at doing that yet, but if I wanted to do something like uh, LaunchBox, I could I could call this script from LaunchBox and and use something like Big Box front end in LaunchBox, so it was it would be all um, beautified, I suppose, in one respect. But uh, for what I need it for, this is absolutely fine. I, I've got no problem just firing off a shortcut from the desktop. So this is the setup file that I've got for my setup for Time Crisis 5. Right, so before I start to show any sort of gameplay footage or at least everything working on here, this isn't meant to be a gameplay video, but just to show you everything working and how it works. Um, here's the Sega Limburg cabinet for anybody that is interested in this in respect of a little bit of, um, I suppose, information about the connectivity on this cab. So if anyone's watching this video who is looking at doing what I've done with a Sega Limburg cabinet, I just thought I'd just share some other information, which undoubtedly, if you've got one of these cabinets, you already know about this, but I will share it regardless. So we'll just pull the front off. I'm not sure actually whether or not um, let's make sure I don't smash anything up. It's always a challenge taking apart these. In fact, let me let me put that down on the floor. Oh. Right. So because this is a Sega Limburg cabinet and it is connected up to my PC, some people might be thinking, well, how have you managed to do that? And I'm not sure we're gonna be able to see. I'm trying to zoom in, but that board there that I've zoomed in, in on, there, that is called a JBS pack. And as this is a Sega Limburg cabinet, it is wired for a, a JBS har harness, which is a harness that was in, installed into these cabinets. So this is a fully working cabinet. It will work with a Limburg PC setup. So whether it's yellow or red, or I think blue as well. There's a different types of of, um, of Limburg. I suppose really main boards that you can buy. It's basically it's a it's a PC based system. Is um, that would connect to a PC via a a JVS a compatible USB port. Well, my uh, PC that I'm using here to do emulation hasn't got that capability so that JVS pack enables me to connect the harness the JVS harness and it converts it effectively to USB so I, I can then connect that to my PC so everything to do with the control panel is through the JVS harness but by using that JVS pack it enables my PC to see this control panel effectively as a set of bot bu buttons buttons <laughs> and this is actually set up the JVS pack that's installed in here the firmware has been set to be recognized as a PS3 controller so that's what my that's what my PC will see it as now I can change that so it's MAME if I wanted to but it's actually set up uh, configuration as a PS3 three controllers so I just thought I'd just show you that quick look around the cabinet that is the power supply unit and there's another main board in there which is do with audio etc I've got a PlayStation 3 in there which I use for anything that's move uh, related so a lot of good games like House of the Dead 3, House of the Dead 4, uh, Time Crisis 4 I think is on the PlayStation 3 yes it is yeah if my memory serves me correctly and I'll play that on this on this cabinet as well so I've got a PlayStation I I think these are called are they eyes move camera but that's just mounted on the top so that is just a quick run through of the cabinet so again for anybody that's interested some more information there and as I said on the video and I've explained this before, but this cab is is all wired up to operate with uh, original Sega guns. So this cabinet was actually set up to run House of the Dead 4 uh, natively 
on the Sega Lindbergh setup in respect to the appropriate Sega Lindbergh PC. Everything's wired in there with the guns, etc. It's got all the main controller boards there for the gun, or guns, because I've got two of them. But these are not what I'm going to be showing here. So we'll end that piece there and we'll then cut to some gameplay footage. Right, so this isn't the best angle, I must admit, but to at least show you that I am using a gun. <laughs> I wanted to get a bit of that in the picture, in case you think I'm lying. Um, and also I wanted to show you the, the, I suppose the process I'll go through to start this up and how it all looks and reacts. So I have on a desktop set up, so uh, this is all connected up to my PC. Uh, light gun is plugged into my PC. So I've got three icons effectively that we're gonna be looking at as part of this insight. And each game, uh, Time Crisis 5, House of the Dead, Scarlet Dawn and Virtue Cop 3 are all what I would call standalone install so they're not requiring any front end to run off so they don't use Techno Parrot for instance as the front end these are all separately set up games so to launch them at the moment I just have to double click on the icon so this one here is about time crisis. So let's have a look to see what happens. So I'll double click on that and I should be able to pull away now. It will go through a boot process and it's just coming up about Windows firewall. So just allow that, that's fine. That's only just come up because I've changed some network settings. And that doesn't normally come up. You set that once, uh, first time you launch the game. So. Uh, so it comes up with a, um, it comes up with a splash screen. So Time Crisis 5 does not need to alter any resolutions or resolution switching necessarily. It's not like House of the Dead. So this is working through the script that I've just shown. And now we've got Time Crisis 5 loaded up. So on the gun, I can turn the borders on. Yeah, so again, I've got all this configured on the gun. And that's the, that's the size of the border. It's not actually that big. Uh, you can set different border sizes, but um, it doesn't have to be um, obtrusive. It does depend on how you set the gun up. And hopefully you can hear me over the noise of the game. So we'll start a game off. So again, I'm not I'm not touching the keyboards here. This is all off off the Sindon light gun. Right. So I've started out on the Sindon, and I'm progressing through the menus on the Sindon. Again, not touching the keyboards. So I've got the button set up for the left and right pedal and we'll just test that now that's picking up left and that's picking up right i know this because it's telling me at the bottom of the screen when it's registering so that's right and again this is on the Sindon light gun and we'll go to left there we go absolutely fine and we'll go to skip now and again i had programmed or configured a skip button and we'll definitely skip through this. And we'll get the sights up. There's the sights. So now we can play the game. And if the gun wasn't accurate, I wouldn't be able to do that with single shots. Can't do that from that side, I need to switch. So it's absolutely fully working, this game is.
And this is a pretty funky game, to be honest. Um, anyone that's played this will uh, will know how good it is. So that is Time Crisis 5 fully working with a Sindon gun on an arcade cabinet. And we will just go through the uh, the, uh, the quitting process. So again, I'll get my keyboard up and I'll press the escape key. So I use one of these um, uh, these Bluetooth uh, sort of micro uh, keyboards with a mouse on or, or, a, or a touch pad that emulates a mouse. And I'll press escape. So oh, let's get the screen thing back up. So I'll press the escape button there. And there you go. It's come back to the desktop. And if I go to my taskbar, oh, well, it's got the graphic there. If I oh, I'd get rid of that, you can't see that, can you? In fact, you probably won't see this at all. But there's nothing in here that's hanging around. All the programs have been closed down appropriately. So, yeah, there you go. And the Sindon Light Gun software is actually closed down. The reason I know that is because if I try and change the borders on the Sindon light gun by pressing the border change key, it doesn't do anything because the software has been closed down. It's not running. So hopefully that gives you a bit of insight into Time Crisis 5. Right, so now we're going to move on to the auto hotkey script. Get me term right. I didn't say that previously with Wario, well, did I? But uh, yes, auto hot key a h k file um <clears throat> right so this is for house of the dead uh scarlet dawn this is slightly different somewhat to the previous script the the the, the um uh, the approach is the same and in broad terms it's the same but this has got a uh, rather nifty feature that I've scripted in respect to changing the screen resolution. So Scarlet Dawn has a bit of a issue in respect to the menu screen working correctly with the light gun and being calibrated. It's absolutely fine once you get into the game and start playing it. It doesn't matter what your resolution is effectively, but at the first part of the menu, so when you're choosing the um, uh, stage, I think, that you go into or where you start off, and also your weapon select originally uh, before you get into the game, it isn't calibrated correctly to the cursor on the screen. And it's a bit of a pain in the backside to choose anything, and you have to set the screen resolution. <coughs> now, it has to be set to be calibrated correctly on that on those on those first those first two screens uh, within the game. It has to be set to 1080p, uh, regardless of of your actual monitor or the native res or whatever of the desktop. It must think, or it must be in a 1080p environment for those two screens to be calibrated correctly. So I've built that into this script to change resolution. So again, we'll just go through briefly this, uh, the sections of the script. So again, uh, we'll skip past the first part here, which is just a setup element. As the previous script that I highlighted, I'm doing the same part with actually looking to see whether the Sindon software is up and running. If it is, it closes it down and restarts it cleanly. And then I'm moving to a, 
suppose really a resolution changing um, uh, part of the script. Now the screen that I am using this on in respect of my arcade cabinet <coughs> it's not a 1080p screen it's, it's actually a um, 768p but it's effectively a 720p screen so I need to change the desktop resolution to uh, 1080p so this part is actually calling a sub procedure <coughs> to change to 1080p and the actual procedure or the subroutine uh, whatever you want to call it is this part here so this is the this is the funky bit that changes the desktop resolution to 1080p so at default uh, my desktop isn't 1080p it's 768p so your desktop could be 4k and you want to change it to 1080p but you want to do it only specifically for this game so this is the beauty of this this is all this is all wrapped up within this game and then i actually load up house of the dead scarlet door in that part of the script and then finally we have the the exit part of the script so again as with the previous time crisis 5 script if i press the uh, the escape key on the keyboard it will close down House of the Dead uh, which is actually two uh, executables that run it then closes down the light gun uh, it's in the light gun software <coughs> and it changes the resolution back to what it was originally which was 768 so this is this part of the script there and then it just exits the script so a very nice clean script in the respect of, of keeping everything self-contained within this batch file um, and it returns the desktop back to what it should be in respect to the resolution right so we're now going to show house of dead scarlet dawn so same process uh, my a an icon set up on the desktop this effectively links through to the script that i've shown previously that i've set up for house of dead scarlet door so again we can click on that that's the only interaction that we should need apart from actually escaping or quitting at the end in respect to using anything other than the gun so it's going through i'll turn the border on again uh, same process as before a uh, thin border i'm using but uh, calibration is fine. So this is the script and the game actually that requires a desktop must be set to 1080p. So this is the script that I showed that switches resolution. Uh, you don't know any of this, you can't see any of it, but it's done it and we will know that for when we actually come onto the menu screen because it'll be perfect alignment with the crosshair. So again, we can start the game off the gun. And hopefully, this will all line up, which it is perfect. So that is absolutely cock on. As you move right into it, it actually uh, recognises the mouse pointer. And the same on this screen as well. So this is really difficult to do if you don't set the resolution correctly. You can't do what I'm doing here, but... We'll go for shotgun and gun. we'll go for machine gun. And again, when we come into the game itself, it will be perfect alignment to the site on my Cinder. I've actually changed the cursor on this game, but I'm going to do some more work on that actually. So I've got this red sort of crosshair cursor and I'm not sure if you can pick this on the on the camera you might be able to see it but the jittering that I was going on about that's the jittering you've got in this game there's a small amount of jitter uh, to be fair we would be better off turning the crosshair off but uh, yeah small amount of jitter it's the only downside in my opinion 
All right, we don't want to hold fire, do we? We want to get on with this, so let's let's get on and do it. And as I think I said in the script set up, uh, the way I've set this game up is that the reload is off the pump action. Now you can go off screen as well if you want to, but and I'm going to change weapon. I can't remember what my keys were now. Here we go. That's all I like. This one's going to get it. Plays exceptionally well, I'm going to be honest. said so this uh, this oh, easy uh, this plays really well on an arcade cabinet as you'd expect it to play not just as well on 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 your pc but there's something different about having it on an arcade cabinet there really is it adds an extra level of uh, realism i think to the game but i'm getting too stuck into this so we're going to end this in a minute before uh, I bore everybody with my crap gameplay, but but effectively it shows you that it's all working fine, it's all off the Sindon gun, and that's the border style that I'm using. So again, I will show you the exit routine. So again on this keyboard, I'll press the escape key, and in the background you'll see that it will disappear, so the border's gone. Uh, there was a slight hang there, and the reason for that is that it was turning the resolution back to the native resolution of the screen, and I absolutely know it's done that because the text that I can see on the desktop is absolutely crystal clear. It, it's not very clear on this video footage, but you'll have to take my word for it. And everything else is closed down correctly. So that is House of the Dead, uh, Scarlet Dawn. So the final script is for Virtua Cop. Three. This is very similar to the first script that I went through for Time Crisis 5. And again, I'll just quickly go through the content of the script. So again, we'll just ignore the, the uh, top portion. I've covered that off already. And actually this part here, which is to do with the Cinder and Light Gun. So again, it is firing this up in respect to the software if, if it hasn't already been fired up. And if it has, it actually closes it down and fires it up again. So it's just going through a clean process to do that. For Virtual Cop 3, you need to load uh, Demol Shooter. So this is the uh, portion of the script that loads up Demol Shooter. And it's not the X64 version of Demol Shooter, it's just Demol Shooter. Next part of the script is to actually load up the emulator so this is the xbox emulator cxbx uh, latest version and it loads up the emulator which is this part of the script there and then on the command line i'm actually loading up uh, the virtual cop 3 uh, rom effectively I've commented out sending, I think that's shift or alt enter after you load up the emulator because you can actually set full screen now within the emulator itself. So this was part of a uh, historical or older script where you had to pass that key through or well, you didn't have to, but, but if you didn't pass it through in the script then you'd have to do it by the keyboard to get into full screen but there's actually a tip box now within the emulator cxbx to ensure that it does that every time it fires up the emulator 
so I've commented that particular line out it's not needed anymore and then finally we've got the on escape part of the script so if it senses the escape button sorry the the yes the escape button it is the escape button <laughs> it sends through uh, F4 and again I think that's alt or shift F4 I can't remember now um, and that will that's a key that's already bound to CXBX to escape or to exit the application so I'm just sending that through as part of the script and then I'm closing down Synden software and then closing down Demol Shooter and exiting the script so quite a uh, uh, not very complex script this one now last but by no means least is VirtuCop 3 so again we'll go through the same process icon is set up on the desktop that is a shortcut effectively straight to the auto hotkey script like I said in the in the introduction part of this video I actually could link these through to a a proper front end or a, or a front end like launch box etc but uh, I don't see the need for the moment but as the as the list of games grow and I'm going to be putting other other um, uh, fighters actually on this game and uh, uh, on this arcade cab sorry and there's also some other shooters I want to put on but we'll we'll cover those as I get to that point in future videos so double click on the icon again it will go for the process uh, already started running the games so it's already in the emulator you haven't seen the emulator that hasn't come up uh, turn the borders on Again, using the Sindon light gun. I'm not touching any control panels, no keyboards at the moment, don't need it. And in fact, this game, we need to set to 4.3 because that's the correct aspect ratio for this game. It was never a widescreen game. Now you can force it to widescreen, but then it, um, it's got the wrong ratio. Everything's stretched and a bit fat, so I'd rather just have it as it was meant to be, which is 4.3. That's a story. And again, the white border isn't that distracting in my opinion. I've got no problem with it at all. Some people have an issue with it. I don't. So start. Right, so we'll pick the mission. So ES mode, I can use that because it's configured. Off Cinder and Light Good, which is one of the buttons. I think the arcade it actually had a pedal. And again, the uh, light gun works really well this game. Exceedingly responsive, everything tracks as you expect it to.
think we'll leave that there. Again, it's proven it all's working with the Sindon light gun. And again, we'll go through the same process of exiting the game. So come back to the keyboard, press escape, to give it a bit of the background there, and it will exit, shut down, and go back to the desktop. Hopefully that video has been of use, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one with some more emulation to arcade cab techno parrot whatever you want to call it uh, uh, technical setup videos <laughs>